When I met Peter, I was, uh, I would consider myself a naive 21-year-old. Uh, when I met him, he wasn't a Christian as yet, but he did say that he wants to be a Christian one day. He was a bit confused with um, the idea of, you know, wanting a godly woman, but not wanting to be a godly man himself. I had this calling on my life to um, be evangelist. I felt that strongly. And when my heart got too involved with Peter, this is when I found out his real beliefs. Peter firmly believed that women were to be seen and not heard in churches. It hurt my heart because I thought that I was hearing God's voice the whole time. Peter invited Tanika to visit him out of town one weekend. She agreed not knowing what he had planned when she arrived. I trusted him. I trusted him. He told me there would be um, a hotel room for myself and he wouldn't be there, you know? I trusted that. And, um, you know, he came in, it was late, it was like 11 o'clock, and he came in and I seen that he was staying. And I said, well, aren't you going? And he said, he's just gonna stay for a while. And I, I went in my, in, in, into bed, and he came into the bed with me and I said, you know, what are you doing? He said, don't worry, don't worry, nothing's gonna happen, nothing's gonna happen. And I trusted him and we laid there and then I trusted him. And he, but he kept on saying to justify what he was doing was, I'm going to marry you. I'm going to marry you. I'm going to marry you. I waited. I was waiting for my wedding, for my wedding day. And I feel that he was, he just stole, stole that up, that, that dream from me. My, my health started to plummet into this place of depression. My face was broken out all over. The entire face was filled with acne. It was so bad. I stopped um, washing my clothes. I stopped combing my hair. I stopped calling my good friends because I didn't want them to see, see me. I just felt so dirty. I felt hopeless. My dad called for, called from Jamaica and he told my mom, you need to bring her to, to Mount Sinai psychiatric ward. At this point, Tanika had barely slept for seven months and wasn't eating. In her confused state, she believed that the only way out of depression was to marry Peter. Plans were made and she was three days away from leaving when a phone call changed everything. And on a Monday, I got a phone call from a girlfriend of mine. She said, I want you to call Peter and I want you to tell him it's over. And I just believed that God was using this woman I got off the phone with her and I mustered up all the strength that I could have to call Peter. And I said, Peter, it's over. I can't give you all the details right now, but all I can tell you is that it's over. Our relationship is over. It's not God's will. I went on my knees. And then what I seen, almost like a vision, something turned and looked at me, and I knew it was God, but he was just waiting for me to cry out to him. Today, Tanika shares her story with audiences all over North America, and has even written a book about her experience, which has a very happy ending. When I met Robert Chambers, who's my husband, who's my Boaz, it seemed like, like a dream come true. He was everything that I could ever ask for. Just his faith in God blew me away. He had everything I was looking for in a husband. He was sensitive to my feelings. He was more than what I could ever ask for in a husband. God is a restorer. So if you think you've messed up along the way and God can't bless you with your Boaz still, it can happen. But there is a requirement. God just asks us to be willing and obedient to follow him, to trust him, allow him to be your guide.